audacious flanking attempt. Well, we're actually seeing Snake switch things up here. Looks like he is going to be playing fair, but no mercy to pair up with him. They still have triple tank, though, with Winston played by Meng Mao and Energy. Uh, they're probably going to go towards the high ground, see what they're up against, and switch things. And this is uh, actually looking really good for Enigma. Enigma's playing the Reaper. So normally the Tracer and Zarya play for the team. They don't have a Zarya this time, but they want this upfront damage, which I'm assuming yeah. they want to contest this high ground because the Roadhog and the Reaper destroys uh, a Reinhardt shield. I love it. I love the combination here as well. It's very much an anti-tank composition coming out from Energy, and so far, not so bad. It's Enigma the first to fall, but Energy so far coming out on top in these trades. Gods just misses that shot. He's still causing some problems here for Energy off towards the side, but it doesn't matter because it's only Key pretty much on his own there. You can see I think his eye was there with him or whoever it was. It's not enough people. And Snake, of course, directly off of this point. They're they lack the staying power there, their tanks were shredded through, in energy strategy, the single tank has paid off brilliantly. And Dummy again in that fight, what was the first thing he did when walking in? Throws a Briarhead Grenade on the ground, catches up the two tanks of Snake, and then Fate's like, alright, who do I even heal now? Because you don't have an opportunity anymore, you might as well just do some damage. Really smart play out of him, and uh, I think he's really using the, the change to Anna to his advantage. I think he's def definitely been practicing this. It is. It's pretty filthy, actually, when you see just how many people are affected by that. And there's a devastating impact. You can't heal. It's ridiculous. Plus, the damage that's done by it as well is nothing to sniff at. Look at the shield. The wall coming up here for Seagull. Now going to drop the Blizzard in the back line. There's a bit of a bubble there coming from the Winston, but it may not be enough at this stage. Seagull now goes towards the Ice Block mode. Two quick kills coming off of it. And it is going to be Energy just dominating Snake yet again. The ults come up at just the right time, and they use them effectively. Snake, it's almost as if they never existed. Energy have deleted them from the map. Thing is, the fair we're seeing at 700, I, I actually don't hate it. It's not really a bad pick, to be honest, because the fact of who's going to kill you. It's, it's Seagull or, or Dummy, maybe, is able to hit you into the sky. If you had a, a Mercy paired up with that, oh, we'd God's actually have a dominator. I mean, God, yeah, but you can generally zone that out for the most part if you're, if you're playing it right. Um, there really wouldn't be much contest against it. The problem is when it comes to the ground fight, when there's a Reaper and a Roadhog, your front line just cannot stay alive. So the fair really doesn't offer you too much um, as you transition, as, as the fights kind of happen. Well, now Snake, a desperate now regroup towards this point. Seagull gets the pick off on Key. You do not want to let that happen if you're Anna. Now the Nanobu's being forced, and I say forced, it comes out on towards Pungay now to try and make something happen with it. But the whole hog is forced from the entirety of Snake away, making half of them to get these kills. God has pushed them into the blizzard. Now they all get caught in that one, but there weren't enough players up for energy to actually capitalize off the freeze. There was maybe, you know, Enigma up towards the side. God's is too busy oh, pushing him in there, but look at that straight to the belly. The meat shot comes in from God, and it finds Meng Mao. Energy winning this fight with maybe two or three players on the point. The thing is, they have to run so far back that actually get towards this payload yet again, and that's been a lot of time for Snake to reinforce the point. Not to mention a Blizzard coming out of key this time. I thought I heard it coming through. No, it actually was not. He got caught up himself and eventually taken a 700. Another has, he has the Groton Surge, but there's just no point to use it. There's no one there who's going to be able to collapse on top of this to make anything happen. Energy is thriving in this environment. They are thriving in this prolonged engagement. God's got two. Two of those whole hogs over the course of that fight. He stayed alive, it was pretty much just him and Enigma doing a lot of the work. Of course, I believe Pooks was in the back line for them. It was a 3v6, and they managed to pick off the key targets and push them back inside that blizzard, and now Enigma is ready to come in with the Death Blossom. Looking for a chance to do so now. Dummy is ready to go. So Enigma now pretty much just runs out of here, gets a speed boost from Pooks, and he's gonna get himself the uh, mana boost as well. Or just walk straight up, that works too. What? Doesn't even really need to use the ult here, but he's gonna go now into the back line anyway. It's gonna be Enigma all over the scoreboard here, and another kill to finish it off. Key, nothing he can do about that one. Link was too fast, he's going to catch him out and push his payload forward. Is he's going to be able to contest it most likely, unless he gets booped away. They were on the left-hand side, where is the people coming from the right? There's no one there, they're going to cross the line! Energy! Without a struggle at all, finish off the second map, take the series up to 2-0 and oh now. Snake are one map away from being knocked out. Business as usual for Energy right now. They're looking pretty confident, they're looking comfortable, and they are looking hot to trot. You can see Pangay just getting on towards that payload, but a little bit too late. And again, we get to see the uh, the ending scene here. But I mean, let's be honest, Jason. Oh. Energy, you said they weren't tested too much. I'm <laughs> so best, jelly of Seagull. That's the best one ever. That is so good. Oh. But no, so... Okay, so I want to look into why Enigma played Reaper, actually. I remember talking to Seagull, and he was mentioning that Enigma was constantly talking about how he just couldn't build up energy against some of these teams, because there's not a lot of fire strikes coming his way for him to take advantage of and get a free 50 energy. So I think they're more than happy to throw him over to a Reaper role and kind of run this little bit more of a DPS, 2 DPS, with uh, yeah. Seagull to act as kind of the third tank with May. Especially when you're playing on two levels, or you have high ground, it's very, very hard to consistently, you know, know who to shield or know how to actually get charge away. Um, Rogue had the same problem on Dorado. We saw Wind right, switch right, right, over right. towards Zenyatta. He said, guys, I can't get any energy on this Zarya right now. They were playing up on the balcony, and there just wasn't really consistent damage coming in towards him. He wanted to build up his ult before the fight came in, but there was no poke coming from the enemy team, because, well, to be fair, it's hard to do. 
So I like this switch. I like go for a Reaper. I mean, it's an extra anti-tank mechanism. Now you've got two. You've got the Roadhog there on your team. So even if we are seeing, you know, double, triple, even quad tank potentially lineups here, it can be very, very hard to deal with. But map two in this best of five going over towards energy.